Well, last week we talked about our expected timing for the first rate hike by the Reserve Bank. And we brought that forward from 2024 to the March quarter of 2023. We pointed out at the time that even though the Reserve Bank is still saying 2024 at the earliest, we feel that that, that rhetoric will start to soften over the rest of this year. Bear in mind they started using that terminology back in February when their forecast for the unemployment rate by June 2021 was 6.5%. And of course the May unemployment rate is just registered at 5.1%. So I expect the Reserve Bank may become a little more cautious in terms of pointing out 2024 at the earliest. And what we talked about last week was that we expected there to be uh, one rate hike in that March quarter of 0.15%, followed by two more hikes during 2023 to get the cash rate to 0.75% by the end of 2023. Now we only publish forecasts out to the end of 2023 but I think it's important this time to provide more guidance as to exactly how far we think that tightening cycle will go and what the peak in the rate will be. Here we're using three basic guidelines. The first one is that we do not expect the rate hike cycle to go into contractionary territory. That's where interest rates will be markedly weighing down on the economy. That happens when the central bank gets concerned about an overshoot in inflation or an intolerably tight labour market. Uh, however, we believe that the inflation uh, rate will hold in that two to two and a half percent over the period and that the unemployment rate will hold in the three and a half to four percent range, which is around full employment. So there'll be no need to ram policy into the contractionary zone. The second guideline we use is that tightening cycles tend to be much shorter than easing cycles. Typically tightening cycles last between one and two years and we expect this will be the same on this occasion. And finally we think the key metric that will determine the extent of the tightening and the impact on the economy will be the sensitivity of the household sector and their very high debt levels. Using all those guidelines and using our calculations, we anticipate that there'll be two more rate hikes in 2024 of 25 basis points each, bringing the cash rate to a peak of one and a quarter percent by the end of 2024 and leading, meaning that will be the end of the tightening cycle. So how did we get to that one and a quarter percent estimate? Well, we've looked back at, um, at previous uh, debt servicing ratios for the household sector. And the measure we use is the proportion of disposable income required to service household debt. We found that in 2007-8, when interest rates reached seven and a quarter percent, that that servicing ratio was 19.6%. And we interpreted that as being contractionary territory. Then in 2009-10, the Reserve Bank raised rates from 3% to 4 and 3 quarter percent. And at that 4 and 3 quarter percent peak, the servicing ratio reached 16.7%. That's where I would put policy at verging on the contractionary zone, but not really heavily into that zone. On our forecasts, which of course are um, based upon assumptions around the growth in household disposable income, around house prices, uh, which of course are incredibly important for household debt and around household debt levels. We're expecting that a one and a quarter percent cash rate by the second half of 2024 would be, con would be consistent with a 16.8% debt servicing ratio, comparable to the ratio that we saw back in 2009 uh, when the Reserve Bank decided that they'd reached the peak in rates. Of course, there are many complications in these calculations. For instance, the Reserve Bank has recently reported in their financial stability review that 25% of borrowers are more than two years ahead on their repayments. But of course, we are talking about a number of years in the future. And of course, uh, over that period, there'll be no rate cuts. And so the proportion of people ahead on their repayments will fall. Indeed, by the time we get to 2024, we expect that about 30% of owner occupiers will have been acquired new loans uh, since the beginning of 2021, meaning that that protection of, of uh, prepayments will be lower. 
We're also assuming that there will be macroprudential policy controls introduced in 2022 as the short term outlook for the housing market remains incredibly strong. In this environment, of course, we also have to refer to what we think will be happening in the US. So in our note last week, uh, we referred to we expect the Fed to begin their first rate hike in December 2022, two more hikes in 2023. We'd expect there'll be another three hikes in 2024. That will bring the US Federal Reserve rate to 1.625 compared to the Australian rate of 1.25. Now, can our rates survive that much below US rates? Remember between 2016 and 2019, Australian rates were steady at around one at one and a half percent for most of that time. And yet US rates changed from near zero to 2.375 percent. At 2.375, the Fed ass assessed that that was the neutral stance. But of course, it didn't turn out to be the case. And the US, US economy and financial markets responded very poorly. And by the end of 2019, the Fed had reached what I would consider to be a more sustainable neutral of 1.625. So that's where I would see those two rates settling in 2024, with Australian rates slightly below US rates. I guess the big question is, have the developments in the last week or so around the virus changed our views? We obviously have to see how things play out from here, but I think one important change is now developing in the economy. And that is uh, a vaccination complacency is leaving our economy. People are realising that they need to get on with it to get vaccinated. Of course, the uncertainty around AstraZeneca is a challenge in that regard, but we can look forward to the time when adequate supplies of Pfizer and Moderna will be available in Australia. And I would think at that time, we'll see a substantial rush for Australians to become vaccinated so that by the first half of 2022, our expectation that full vaccination will be largely achieved uh, will still be in place. Also have to remember the evidence that we've seen from our own uh, data that uh, spending in Melbourne that obviously was adversely affected by the two week shutdown in Melbourne has returned to pre shutdown levels. So with short shutdowns, uh, spending will only be uh, dis disrupted for a very short period of time. Uh, and of course, there's considerable uncertainty as to how long the shutdown will remain in New South Wales, but certainly in the other states, we would expect the shutdown will be fairly short. So in conclusion, as we've indicated, great deal of uncertainty over the next few years, but we do believe that as we move into 2022 and 2023, there'll be more stability and those policy reactions that we're expecting will become clearer. Thank you.